We're going to talk about deponent verbs in this video, which goes with sections 93, 94, and 95 of Hansen and Quinn's Greek, an intensive course. That corresponds to pages 316 and 317. So, deponent verbs are simply a different category of verbs that look a little different from the verbs that you're used to. You are used to verbs like luo, luo, luso, elusa, leluka, lelumai, eluthane, is the pattern that you're used to in your principal parts. And the first four of those principal parts are active. And you're used to the pattern of o, o, a, and a in the first four principal parts with the middle passive my and the passive thane in the fifth and the sixth principal parts. And that pattern is held pretty much true except for verbs that are missing principal parts or perhaps have a second aorist or alpha and epsilon or epsilon or omicron contract. But you may have noticed in the vocabulary for unit 11 of Hansen and Quinn some verbs that don't look like that. They're missing some principal parts and they don't have the familiar omegas in the first and second principal part or the familiar alpha ending in the third principal part. And what these are are deponent verbs. Deponent comes from the Latin verb depono, which means to put aside. And really what's gone on with these verbs is that they have put aside their active forms. They've just let them go. And these verbs only have middle or passive forms. So luo, with a nice active form that you learned way back in unit two, means I free. But bulomai, that looks middle or passive, means I want. And dachomai, which looks middle or passive, means I receive or I welcome. And those definitions are active in English. We use active forms to, to indicate those things. Deponent verbs are basically middle or passive forms with active meanings. And this isn't actually a strange concept to you. You learned in Unit 7 that grapho in the middle means indict. So graphomai you could translate as I indict. Pathomai means I obey instead of the active patho, I persuade. And luomai, which we know means I free, and the active in the middle form means I ransom. So you're actually already used to giving an English active translation to middle forms. It's just that those, all three of those verbs have active forms and active meanings as well, whereas bulamai and dachomai do not. Now, just because these new kinds of verbs are missing a couple of principal parts or have different endings and have abandoned their active forms doesn't mean that the principal parts aren't still doing the same things. So you know that first principal part is for the uh, present system in the indicative and in the subjunctive and in the optative and now in the imperative plus the infinitives and participles. That's still true for bulamai and dachomai, not to mention the imperfect indicative. It's just that you'll only have forms in the middle passive for all of those moods. The same thing goes for the second principal part. The second principal part still does the future indicative and it's going to do the same thing with bulamai and dechomai and other deponent verbs. It's just only going to have middle forms and you'll translate them with the active definition. Same goes for the third principal part. The whole aorist system, just this time, it won't have any active forms. Fourth principal part is entirely missing in deponent verbs because in a fourth principal part in a regular verb, it is only responsible for active forms. So a deponent verb doesn't have a fourth principal part. Fifth principal part will be for perfect 
uh, the perfect system. So indicative and infinitive and participle. And the sixth principle part, still for the aorist system. So you may have realized that bulamai is missing the third principle part and dachomai is missing the sixth principle part. And this is why Hansen and Quinn classifies bulamai as a passive deponent and it sees that it has the sixth principle part, which is aorist passive system, and that's the one that's still there, and so it counts this as a passive deponent. Of course, it doesn't completely work because the second principle part is future middle forms, um, even though they're active meanings. So I'm not quite sure how useful that designation is, and I would say the same thing about the middle deponents, where Hansen and Quinn classifies verbs like dachomai that have a third principle part but no sixth principle part as a middle deponent. The truth is that when you start reading real Greek and encounter more and more verbs, it's not quite as regular as that. And I'm not sure that there's anything particularly useful about the distinction between a passive and a middle deponent. Really, you have to do what Hanson and Quinn so wisely advises you all the time, which is simply to know your principal parts all of them, and which ones belong to each verb. There is another designation that might be a little bit more useful. So we get passive deponents and middle deponents, according to Hansen and Quinn. But you may also have noticed in the vocabulary the verb akuo, which means I hear, the verb lambano, which means I take, and the verb pasco, which means I suffer. And you probably noticed that even though they have omega first principal parts, all of them have a second principal part that's only middle, akusomai, lapsomai, and pesomai. These verbs we designate as mixed deponents, a bit more useful term because it reflects better the reality of many Greek verbs. So here, all of these verbs have the same meaning throughout, it's just that that second principal part has a middle form, even though it keeps the active meaning. We should try a few examples. If we have the sentence, tus angelus dechomai, we translate it with a nice active meaning of dechomai, even though it looks middle or passive. And that translation is I receive the messengers. If we see to Xenus a dexonta, that means they welcomed the strangers. Third person plural, aorist, indicative, but that middle form is just simply how Greek expresses this particular verb, even though we consider it an active meaning. Lithus eistos pedion lepsitai has us using that second principal part of lambano and it means she will take stones to the field. So in the future lambano is deponent. It has a future deponent and so we're simply going to translate that as the future of the English active meaning. And that's simply how Greek expresses it. We don't know why, it's just how this verb works, and it's something you need to know in order to translate it. And the last example, biblion grapsai ebulethemen. There we have the aorist of bulamai, and so the translation is, we wanted to write a book. That's not a whole lot of examples of all of the different forms that deponent verbs can take because, of course, they can do all of the things that the middle and the passive have done with non-deponent verbs that you've learned all these chapters. But this should give you a start on how to approach them, and the drills in Hansen and Quinn will give you a lot of practice. And that's it for now.